Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today we are continuing the Football Manager Career Mode with Chelsea Football Club and we will switch over now to take a look at what we've got in store today. As you can see, Chelsea versus Fulham is the main fixture bar at home at Stamford Bridge. And then the other fixture we have lined up is the Carabao Cup semi-final first leg against Manchester United. And of course, that is a big game. You know, we need to be getting a good result at home Um because Manchester United away, anything can happen. You know, referees love Old Trafford. So, looking at the Premier League table, we need to move away from, you know, Newcastle and Arsenal, those teams that are just below us, look to push up towards Liverpool and Manchester City, but it's looking like, you know, with about 20 to 21 games gone in this Premier League season, I think catching them for the Premier League title is looking a little bit much, but I think this is a big improvement. You know, last year we finished 12th, obviously, in the real world, and to be now with a completely different squad looking at hopefully a third place finish maybe if we go on an insane run of form um a cup win or a um a second place maybe if liverpool fall off it's looking pretty good so let's go into the tactical meetings ready to go into this game against fulham and we have to keep in mind that there's only a three-day break in between this game and the Manchester United game, and it's a two-day break to Swansea. So we've got a very quick turnaround of fixtures, and of course the Manchester United fixture is the one that's probably of more importance because it, there is a cup on the line there. But we need to be picking up points in the Premier League, so we can't exactly be throwing this game down the drain either. So Mudrick's still not fit, and on that left-hand side I'm going to be starting Cole Palmer. He's of course been brilliant for Chelsea so far he's got a goal in the previous episode so I think it just makes sense to get him on the pitch and given that we don't really have any other um, players available off the bench that are attacking minded Carney Trookmaker really not impressed me recently has been in pretty poor form he seems to be missing sitters in front of goal left right and centre so he will not make the squad today and I'm going to be playing Romeo Lavia in front um, of the defence because Enzo Fernandez is looking a little bit tired and we can bring him off the bench if we need to. Wesley Fofana, I'm very tempted to give him his first start in a long time because he is looking pretty ready and then that means that we'd have a fresh Disassi ready for the next game. It's a risk but I'm going to do it. I'm going to bring... Axel de Sassi out of the squad so that he'll be fit, uh, fit and ready for that Manchester United game and hopefully if we do get you know a few goal lead we can bring Barrio Chile on for Colwell and hopefully then we'll have a fairly fresh defence um, for the next game and other than that I'm pretty happy I don't think I want to make too many more changes we can make a lot of substitutions at half time to try and keep the squad fresh but overall you know what I think I'm happy with it I'm very tempted to make one more change and put Conor Gallagher in for Nkunku. Um, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Conor Gallagher in that role has really impressed me so far. So let's go ahead and do that. And we will head into this game. Bullen coming into this game on some pretty poor form, if you can see on this right-hand side. Four losses and one win in their last five. So if we don't pick up a win today, disappointment will be not even close to enough to describe my emotions on this game. But we're 10 minutes in, looking good. The stats are in our favour, so let's see how it goes. Fulham with the ball back at their goalkeeper now as they look to go forward. And they're doing a pretty good job of it, to be fair. They've just bypassed our entire midfield and they're going down the wing. Ball goes inside to Andreas and there is a foul from Reese James. Oh no. This is going to be a penalty, isn't it? This is going to be a penalty. They're going to check it with VAR. I'm sure it'll be given, yep, there's a penalty. So Pereira has won them a penalty. And it now relies on Robert Sanchez to save the day. Please, Robert Sanchez. Yes, he does just that. And Colwell clears the ball out for a throw in. Wow, we needed that. Wow, and that is the only highlight that we have seen in this entire half of football. So I'm going to tell them I'm very much not happy with that. And in terms of substitutions, I'm not going to make any just yet, but I will definitely be thinking up a few ready for this uh, second half if things don't improve. Reese James is going to take a free kick here. He goes directly towards goal. And how on earth has the keeper missed that one? I'm going to take us back down to positive from attacking. We'll take another look at this. It looked like the keeper maybe ran out expecting this to be a cross uh, deep into the back post. And... Wow, just got caught absolutely off guard, <laughs> and I will take that every day of the week. 
The ball going down the line here to find Connor Gallagher. He goes inside to Raheem Sterling. He does lose out on the ball, but wins it back. Puts it across the line, and Cole Palmer is there to tap it in. And that is an ex-Manchester City connection. Sterling to Cole Palmer. And that's Cole Palmer's second goal in three appearances, I believe, for Chelsea now. In his first two starts, he has scored in each game. So he's shown to be a very, very good player for us so far. And that is great work from Sterling. A lot of credit needs to go to him there because that was brilliant. Romeo Lavia winning the ball back for us there as Gallagher looks to spin and take us forward. Looks to find Caicedo, but he can't quite. And now Fulham going to look to break themselves. They go long to Kearney. Can he keep a hold of it? He goes out wide to Adama Traore. Ball into the box. Good clearance from Colwell there. And now we look to go down the other end of the pitch, maybe. If this highlight does continue, Cole Palmer getting on the ball, turning and running. Can he find a ball into the box? Come on, Cole. He drives in, finds Caicedo, finds Gallagher, finds Lavia, edge of the box. He goes for a curler, and that is a brilliant... Oh, I thought it was a save. It hit the, the crossbar, it seems, and just went over the bar. That was a lovely bit of counter-attacking from us. But we are now in the 75th minute, so I'm going to make some changes. We have a two-goal lead. So I think now is the time to bring off a few of our key players. You know what? I'm going to bring Hazard on. A 2-0 lead. Noni Madueke can stay on the bench for now. And I think... Actually, you know what? Hazard can go on the left. Noni Madueke on the right. Hazard as an inside forward. That is something we haven't seen as a long time. Uh, in a long time, rather, for, as Chelsea fans. Let's see if he can cook something up in the last 10 minutes. Harry Wilson looks to now put the ball into the box for Fulham. It's a good header out, but they do still keep possession of the ball as he drives it into the box here. Deflected ball, but Sanchez manages to get his hands on that nice and comfortably. And maybe we can look to go forward here. We've got 10 minutes left, plus added time. Sanchez takes his time, but he goes long. Oh, if Madueke could have headed that on, Nicholas Jackson was in. We do still have some defending to do here. Ball into the box. Adama at the back post, but he was offside. Hazard getting his first touch of the ball here, but does get crowded out by three players. I think a, a very fit and sharp Hazard would normally have kept that ball under control. But he does have it out on the wing here. He puts the ball in. Conor Gallagher shoots, but it's a poor, poor shot there. Needed a bit more power, and that was an open goal, basically. One of the last chances of the game here is Nicholas Jackson headers, and it just comes off the corner of the crossbar and the post. And there's only a couple minutes left to go here. So assuming we don't, I was about to say, make any silly mistakes, but we almost did exactly that there. But Caicedo has the ball for us now. Nicholas Jackson finding Romeo Lavia. Romeo Lavia, by the way, is a very great player that I've enjoyed having in this team. As Hazard finds Matson. I found that he's just performed very well defensively and attackingly. You know, been a very solid player all around for us. Very happy to have him in our squad. As Fafana now on the ball has had a good start back into this team. Malo Gusto surely picking on this one. He does. Hazard heads into the box <laughs> towards goal. And it's just over the bar. Mate, that Hazard goal is coming. I can feel it. But there it is. Full time in this fixture. Um, Hazard having a very good performance actually after he came on. So that's a nice bit of fitness for him. Nice win over our rivals. Of course, Fulham are a London based team. And wow, their form has been pretty abysmal so far this season. And that has pulled, you know, pulled us a little bit away of Newcastle in the pack that's just behind us. Fafana making his Chelsea debut. Um, sure. I, I don't really think so, but um, he did play for us a lot last season, but whatever. We'll let the game do its thing there. And now we only have three days break until that game against Manchester City. Wow, Mbappe signs a new four-year deal at PSG. That's actually some big news that's just come out there. And looking at some of the other fixtures, as you'd expect, pretty much overall, Arsenal getting a win over West Ham, so that pulls them back up just behind us. But they are eight points um, behind as it stands, though they have played a game less. And Erling Haaland banging in the goals for Manchester City in the later fixtures as he gets a 4-0 win over Luton and Tottenham and Manchester United draw. So that's good for us because it keeps them a little bit, you know, in the rearview mirrors. They're chilling somewhere back there. Um, and Tottenham having a very torrid season down in ninth position as things stand. But man, let's just take a look at the top goal scorers because Haaland, Haaland is on 44 goals. I mean, I know he's unreal on this game, but that is something different. Armando Broya leading the way behind the rest of the pack. 
with 15 goals. So he has had a brilliant season so far. Raheem Sterling and Rhys James doing good on the assists tally. But that is just mental. There is no way you can compete with that. He's averaging a goal every 40 minutes. He gets a goal every half. That is some insane <laughs> player that they've got on their hands there. You've got to pray he ends up in Real Madrid or something soon because having him in the Premier League is just... Uh, you can't win. Looking at some news around the Premier League, Moyes has been sacked by West Ham. So West Ham, who are currently... I mean, they're in 12th position. That's actually quite crazy. Um... He has been sacked, and they'll be looking for a new manager. Julian Nagelsmann is favourite to take over at the moment, but that is a pretty crazy um, turn of events, considering you know they're, they're in twelfth position. They're only a few points of being in Europe, you know, if, a, a run of form, and they'd be pushing it. So that is a crazy result um, for West Ham. Liverpool beating Bournemouth three one, so it, it just looks like it's going to be more and more difficult to catch that that leading pack this season anyway. Next season, I think will be something different. And here we go. We are on game day at Stamford Bridge, ready for this Carabao Cup fixture. Mudrick's still injured, man. It feels like it's been forever, but it does say only four days until he will be back, but he'll need a lot of um, sort of rehabilitation getting his match sharpness back up. So he obviously is not eligible to play, and Cole Palmer not eligible to play because he is cup tied. He has played for Manchester City. So we actually have a problem here because we've already played Hazard in the under-23s, so we're going to have to play Nkunku on the left. I'm going to put Conor Gallagher in at that role. We're basically just going to fill the bench here with um, some other players because we pretty much have run out of players to put on the bench that, you know, fit the attacking mould and all that sort of stuff. So as it stands, I think this is the team I'm going to go with. You know, we've got that game against Swansea in the FA Cup, but that is much weaker opposition, so we should be sending our strongest guys in uh, to, to win this game, hopefully. And it is the home legs, so you're expecting a good result. And everyone is looking very, very fit and very, very sharp, minus Nicholas Jackson. Maybe you should argue I should be playing Armando Broya because he has been in good form. But I want to get Nicholas Jackson back into it, and I think he's played decently recently. That's all around. So let's uh, take this team in to the game and see what we can do. Enzo with the ball on the edge of the box here. He finds Colwell, who finds Caicedo, he goes for a shot but it was blocked, and this could be an opportunity for Manchester United to go for a counter-attack here. We've got quite a few players pushed up the pitch. They are making their way back. We have a ball going long to Reese James there. That's all they can manage to find as Enzo finds Gallagher. He looks over the top to Sterling. That's a great ball down the line. He cuts back, finds Gallagher in the middle of the box. He shoots and he scores. That is fantastic play there. That ball through to Gallagher was just weighted perfectly from Sterling. And then Gallagher's rocket strike, playing him at that cam roll where he plays as the shadow striker. Man, he is something different. We're looking to put the ball in the box now. And I think it'll be Reese James shooting, uh, Chilwell actually, yeah, from this left side, putting it into the box here. He looks for Nicholas Jackson. Oh my gosh, the ball filled to Disassi and he rockets it towards goal, but it's just past the post. And we have definitely started the stronger team so far. And we have a goal to show for it. But I would really, really like to get, you know, a bit of a cushion on them because we've seen that they're capable of scoring against us in previous games. And they have the ball in their back line here as Martinez finds Casemiro, but Enzo inter intercepts that pass, and that was a lovely bit of play as we now look with De Sassi to go forward, finding Sterling. Enzo back down to Sterling, ball into the box. Nicholas Jackson takes it, turns, shoots, and oh, there's a slight tackle that just blocks him. He seemed to take a bit too long to get his shot away because it looked like he could have just taken that first time. Wow, that ball was absolutely rifled into the box there. As Reese James now takes the ball out wide, putting the ball into the box, Nicholas Jackson gets to it, and he has headed that into the back of the net. There's a suspicion of offside. The linesman didn't flag it, but the referee is getting this checked with VAR. Please allow it, and he has. Thank God, the ball in from Reese James was amazing here. He had one player chasing him, it was Casemiro. Wasn't phased by it at all, and it's a great leap and header from Nicholas Jackson. Speaking of, he is on the ball again there as he gives it to Caicedo, who goes out wide. The ball not finding anyone in the box, though, and they're going to look to break themselves here. We are putting pressure on them, though, in that back line, but they've done well here. They found Brandon Williams in the right-back position, who's going to look to take him forward. He finds Wijnaldum, who they've signed, obviously, ex-Liverpool. That's a controversial one. Anthony into the box here. And what? He is just stopped still and shot across goal. 
when no one what? No one blocked that or the keeper not even attempting to save you. What the hell was this? That Oh my days, Robert Sanchez, mate, you are about to get your contract terminated. And just before half time we have Reese James on the ball here as he goes short to Connor Gallagher off the free kick. And we're looking to draw them out a little bit as we find Connor Gallagher driving into the box. He puts the ball in. Ooh, that looked like it may even across the line there, but Nicholas Jackson's shot does not threaten Onana too badly. We have been far superior. If you look at the stats, we have been fantastic compared to them. And that goal has just put just made me a little nervous, you know. They just get goals out of nothing, this team. So I'm gonna tell the guys. Um we just do we're doing well getting the shots we keep going. We just want to keep those shots turning over because we're creating good quality chances. We'll send them all out for the second half here. And hopefully no more funny business from Robert Sanchez because you know, in the last few episodes I've just been seeing a few mistakes from him that have got me a little bit worried. But Nkunku has the ball out on this left hand side, finds Chilwell into the box. Oh Nana fumbles it and Sterling head is that in and they're checking it for VAR again. They do everything VAR for Manchester United. What are they even checking here? It can't have been an offside, surely. It looked like Sterling was going to be way onside by the time he headers that. And the goal is awarded. There we go. They're trying everything to, to get this Manchester United team back into the game. We will have a look to see what they were checking for. They were checking for an offside there. Jesus. He was about 10 metres onside. But there, as we see here, Manchester United are really desperate to get back into this game. And Nicholas Jackson makes a great, oh my gosh, a great interception. And almost an absolute wonder goal. He has won us a corner, in all fairness. But wow, that just interception turns, shoots, and it was destined for the top corner. And Enzo tries to get the ball back into the box, but the highlight has nothing more to it. Caicedo on the ball here finds Enzo Fernandez, and we seem to just be toying with them a little bit here. The crowd are giving them the the olays as we pass through them. And Chilwell finds Caicedo inside to, uh, Enzo Fernandez back out to Chilwell. We are really messing with them today. We've had some great patterns of players. Sterling head is in the box again, and that is 4-1. This first leg could almost not have gone better bar that mistake from Robert Sanchez as Sterling has scored two headers and we're into the 65th minute here I'm looking at making some changes but if we're looking capable of scoring even more goals to put this game hopefully to bed uh, in both legs wise I will happily keep a strong team out as we give the ball back to Anthony why are we gifting Anthony goals today what is going on Chilwell with a mistake this time to give Anthony a goal. This guy is the luckiest guy in football manager as things stand. And I'm going to now make some changes because we do have that cup game coming up. And I will switch us to this formation. Oh, that is so frustrating that we've given him away. Like, we only have a two-goal lead now, which, you know, can be overturned when you're playing at Old Trafford. Um, yeah, these are the changes I'm going to be making I'm going to be putting Reese James not as a complete wing back because I think that's a bit too risky. Um, in the midfield, Romeo Lavia can probably go box to box and then we switch them too as he is the better uh, tackler, I believe. No, actually, it's, it's Caicedo that's got 18 tackling, isn't it? Yeah. I'll switch them two around. And the only other player I really want to get off the pitch is Enzo Fernandez, but I'll leave that substitution for a little bit. And this is surely set to be the last highlight of the game. If this ends up in a Manchester United goal, I will be fuming because we'll only be going into the next game with a one-goal lead after playing so brilliantly. But Carney took a make of bricks into the box and Onana makes a great save. This is starting to get ridiculous at this point. He has made so many saves. We honestly could have scored six or seven quite comfortably today. But they look to go long here and it's Brandon Williams on the ball. He looks to go forward. He finds Anthony, the man with the luckiest touch in the world at this point in in time but that was offside and that is full time so ultimately a 4-2 win is a very good result but the fact we gave them two goals from a 0.5 xg was just awful so i'm gonna tell them very happy with the result the way they played you know a two goal lead is of course a fantastic result but to think that really should have been four nil is where that gets a little bit disappointing but Tottenham have been uh, beaten 3-1 by Leeds, which is a crazy result there. Still in getting two goals and one assist, we're going to give him 
some uh, well-deserved praise there. We'll send the assistant to that uh, press conference. And overall, that win against Fulham and a win against Manchester United, you can't complain there. The next episode, we'll see us away at Swansea in the FA Cup fourth round and then the second leg against Manchester United at Old Trafford. You know what Old Trafford can be like with referees, so you never really know if that two-goal lead will be enough. But tune in next time to see that episode. Please leave a like on this one if you did enjoy. Hit subscribe so you make sure you see that next episode. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>